There's more than one reason to make Italy's presidential elections interesting this time around, but nothing compares to media tycoon Silvio Berlusconi's bid. After leading full governments and several legal convictions, he's back in the political arena. His odds of being elected are slim, but the question is do political parties still need him? We put it to Giovanni Orsina, dean of the Luis School of Government in Rome. Berlusconi's continuous presence doesn't say anything good about Italian politics. It shows that politics is unable to renew itself and is totally deconstructed. Institutions in this country are not able to train a new class of political leaders. Berlusconi wants to end his political career with a big round of applause and the whole country on his side ready to recognize his importance. And there's no better way to do so than being elected Italy's president. And differently from past elections, this time it looks like there is a lot at stake. This time we will find out who the next prime minister will be and who will be in charge of implementing the next generation EU program. But also these elections will be about ensuring that the country is out of the pandemic soon and it's also about an overall reorganization of political parties ahead of the 2023 general elections. But there is another aspect that marks the difference between this one and previous elections. Whatever is being decided in Rome, it will have effects on Brussels, Paris and London. Mario Draghi's credibility and international standing make him a heavyweight candidate. Replacing him as prime minister if he becomes president is the dilemma political parties now face. Given what has happened, I believe that it's very likely that Draghi will be forced to remain in his position, that it will be easier to agree on a new president than finding Draghi number two replacing Draghi number one. Italy is renowned for its political instability, with one year left before the next general election. Fears are mounting over the possibility of a government crisis. Both the government crisis and early elections are not excluded. I'm among those who believe that early elections would not be as catastrophic as most people think. I would not rule it out, although it is a less possible scenario. Italy has always been unstable from this point of view, but it can manage its lack of stability. It always finds a solution in the end. It has always done so. One thing is certain. Regardless of who will become Italy's next president, the electoral campaign will soon be in full swing with political infighting potentially threatening the implementation of Italy's long overdue reforms, which is what the country needs to get post-pandemic funds from the EU and save the economy. Giorgio Orlandi, Euronews, in Rome.